A lovely evening to all. I'm Sandeep Bansali from Team GIBS Bangalore. Today, we all are connected virtually for the GIBS Predict the Life Knowledge Webinar Series. On the topic, personality development and winning attitude. On behalf of GIBS Business School Bangalore, I welcome all the participants to this webinar. Before we start, kindly allow me to say a few words about GIBS Business School in Bangalore. GIBS, the Global Institute of Business Studies, is a part of Goyal Educational Trust, is an exclusive business school. We are located in the IT capital of India, that's Bangalore. GIBS is an institute of international educational standards, and GIBS PGDM and BBA program are the cutting edge program with a difference. GIBS has introduced a series of free national and international webinars, leadership talk series, and panel discussions on the trending topics called webinar GIBS spreading the light of knowledge, which aims to bridge the gap between the classroom learning and the ground realities of the business world by inviting the national and international leaders who are the industry experts, academia luminaries, and entrepreneurs to share their vast array of challenging experiences. These talk series are spread over the course of the entire year. Not only do these sessions inculcate a strong positive relationship between the academia and industry, but also provide the students an opportunity to gain the crucial insight into the present market trends, operational challenges by learning from the industry stalwarts themselves. Even before we step into the industry, so GIBS is also being featured in India's most leading business magazine, that's Forbes India magazine, as a new age business school. GIBS is also excited to share that it has been recently ranked as 11th best B school in the top emerging B school category by the Times of India survey. So, without a much ado, I welcome you all once again to this wonderful webinar, which is going to be, I'm sure, this webinar is going to give you the maximum resources, maximum benefit for your personality development and attitude building. Today, I deem to take it as my privilege to welcome Mr. Aftab the resource person of today's webinar. Sir, we are glad to have you here and you have accepted our invitation to grace this webinar and happy to welcome you, sir. Thank you. Today's webinar topic is personality development and winning attitude. I deem it as a privilege to introduce Mr. Aftab to this August gathering. Mr. Aftab is an international trainer holding a bachelor's degree in commerce from Baldwin's Meteorologist College and PGDM from Mangalore. He has acquired experience in the areas of marketing, sales, business development, aviation, manpower consulting, recruitment. The culmination of all the years of learning and crystallization into training and coaching. He is an effective team builder with a strong interpersonal and management and communication skills. He has personally oriented more than 5,000 plus students and found that the students have shortfall in clearing interviews and consolidating jobs and making a career. It includes a training in the corporate organizations and educational institutions on stress management, internal dialogue, positive parenting, communicative English, presentation skills, interview skills, mock sessions, assessments at each level through SWOT analysis of students, teachers, and professionals. He started in 2009 as a consultant and continuing it till date, handling international assignments in Africa, Kenya, Nairobi, trained on customer services, business etiquette, public relations, team building, and etc. Ex exponential experience in sales training, traveling pan India through TBS Motors Empire sales trainer. He has also worked with Jet Airways, Qatar Airways as a senior cabin crew. He has worked as a team leader recruitment for Fox Jobs Private Limited and the Sky Enterprise Private Limited. Sir has trained a team from the top brand of the world to name a few. It's Techno Brain Kenya, Jika Kenya, Capgemini, SAP, Google, Accenture, IBM, Test, Cisco, Oracle. Sir, the list goes on. So, sir, just to cut down on the list, pardon me for this, but I would like to welcome you again on this and I would over to you, sir. It's all yours. And I'm sure the students will enjoy this session and they will have an amazing learning experience throughout the time which they are investing in the webinar. Lovely. Thank you very much. It was indeed uh, a very detailed introduction that you had to uh, 
give about myself. Thank you very much, uh, Sandeep sir. All right. Uh, once again, from my side, uh, good evening, everybody, uh, all of you. Uh, I welcome uh, you to this journey that we have with each other for about a few minutes. Yeah. All right. So today the topic is amazing. It's about personality development and winning attitude. So, uh, you know, this is uh, interesting because I always give certain examples, certain stories. I play a lot of games when I say a lot of games, as in I do a lot of uh, activities during my uh, training sessions. So I, uh, this is interesting. I just have uh, Sandeep sir uh, right uh, on my screen that I can see. It's uh, very nice. So uh, I think uh, let's go ahead with this uh, uh, understanding of what does an attitude mean? A lot of us, we don't realize, we don't understand the meaning of attitude. And uh, let me say, uh, this word attitude is, is a cliche, you know. The reason is the moment we say that this person has attitude, there is a very, very uh, negative connotation to this word attitude. But let's try and identify and understand what does attitude mean? Because until unless we don't have the basics right, we would not be able to understand the actual crux of uh, what does a personality mean. And when we talk about personality, what are we going to develop as a personality development? Yeah. So let's try and identify, understand what does attitude mean? Yeah. Okay. So uh, Sandeep, sir, since you're just there uh, with me right now, uh, so I will take you uh, as an uh, example. Okay. So let's do this together. So uh, let me give you a small little uh, incidents which uh, took place in my life. Yeah. So once upon a time, just about, uh, by the way, I must say, all of you, ladies and gentlemen, Sandeep sir did mention about uh, my professional career life. I have to say that I have a personal life also. I'm, uh, by the way, I am happily married with uh, <laughs> one wife and uh, God has been kind and God has blessed me with two daughters. So I've got, uh, practically, I've got three ladies to take care in my life, yeah. So uh, once upon a time, when I say once upon a time, just about uh, a little more than a decade back, which is about 11 years back when I was absolutely bubbling with a lot of positive uh, energy. I was just, uh, you know, with a lot of zeal and zest in me, which even now that I have, but age is slowly catching up on me. But the zeal and the exemplary that I had those days was at a different degree. So I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to refer to that, yeah. So one day I just, uh, you know, uh, I enter into my house after a real long day in training, very, very satisfied. Trainings are very gratifying, you know, the moment once you're done with the entire day in the evening when the student comes, that is the participant, when they come in and they say that, uh, sir, I just want to talk to you for about a minute's time. So yes, please go ahead. And uh, our, uh, the participant comes and when the participant comes up and uh, a person says that, sir, I've not been talking to my father since uh, three and a half years for whatever reasons, you know, there are a lot of people who've got absolute damaged relationships. So uh, with whatever that you said today, I think today I'm going to go ahead and speak to my father today. You know, what more do you need uh, at the end of day, when your talks have actually reached the person's heart and perhaps given a jolt to their soul. Yeah. So the, the, the kind of a job that you do, that the kind of a job that I do is very gratifying. Yeah. So with a lot of, you know, uh, of course, there's a lot of physical energy which has gone there, mental energy which has gone there. So once I come back home, uh, my, uh, you know, I'm entering into the house. Obviously, the door is locked. I'm just uh, you know, uh, dramatizing this entire thing so that nobody gets bored and they view what I'm trying to say. Not just listen, but they also view it. So I no uh, I knock the door. So the door the door opens, and uh, the way in which that my wife says uh, good evening, I understand that the weather conditions inside is not appropriate. You know, the weather has been really hot, and I don't know what is the reason why. Yeah, <laughs> so. 
So I enter home very timidly. I don't say anything. And my girls are very little ones. Uh, the first daughter is about uh, four years and the second one is just about three years. Tiny little tots. So I walk inside and I call them. Yeah. Are the ladies there or where are they? Have they gone out somewhere? So both the girls, they just peep through and they just say, hi, dad. And I say, come here. Then they, you know, show those gestures that the mummy is very, very hot and she's very angry. I ask my wife what happened. And my wife starts shooting left, right and center. She says, these kids don't listen to me every time you tell me, they say, oh, you know. You know, she, she's absolutely frustrated, whatever that has happened during the day. So I quietly, like a very nice husband, I quietly listen to whatever that she says. And uh, she says that these girls don't listen. They don't eat on time. They just uh, trouble me. They don't uh, drink milk and this and that and all those regular normal questions because she's frustrated. So I called the first one, come here, and uh, she wouldn't come. And my wife says, there is somebody who's coming home right now. There is something that I need. Go ahead and get it. So I tell the first one, my first daughter, come, let's go bring that stuff. So I take her and I'm on my bike. I have a very big bike at home called Activa. Yeah. So I have my daughter stand right in front of me and I start the bike and I'm just going on the way. And I ask this girl. Now, what happened actually? And the girl starts saying that, see, mommy keeps feeding me food, so much of food that I don't want to eat so much. She gives me milk at a appropriate time, which I don't want to drink so much of milk. Now, when you listen to the kid, you, I mean, you feel that what she's saying is right because her co complaint is very genuine. But when you listen to your mother, now she has a different thing because she says that no, the kids have to, you know, they have to be nourished and this and that. Now I tell like a fatherly personality, I give her a lot of gyan saying that, you know what, you'll have to listen, you know, it is a saying that beneath your feet, there lies your heaven, you know, uh, in Hindi they say, no, that beneath your mother's feet lies your heaven and beneath your father's feet, uh, lies the door or the key to the door of heaven. Yeah, that's that's the saying. That's the kind of uh, uh, saying that, that, that we've been told and we, that, that is exactly what we've been telling the kids as well. So the kid, very ironically, she just says that, uh, yeah, I don't see anything beneath my mother's feet. There is nothing, actually. And I say, Beta, you'll have to grow up a little for you to understand these things. And you know what? You need to do a lot of hard work. You need to do a lot of mehnat. Mehnat is the word that I use. Okay. And this kid turns around and she asks me, Dad, what does this word hard work mean? Now, I must tell you this, Sandeep, sir. There are a lot of people here. Believe me, I've done this, this particular uh, uh, exercise or an illustration that I'm presenting right in front of all of you. I'm sure 80 to 90% of the people would have their interpretation to this word called hard work. They wouldn't understand what does hard work mean. Yeah. Now, what does hard work mean? A lot of us think that, you know, commitment, dedication, and so on. Now, let's simplify this. Let's keep it very, very, very simple. Hard work means doing something which we don't like. A lot of us don't get this. Hard work means doing something which we do not like. Uh, a lot of people say that, sir, uh, once upon a time, I wanted to become a badminton player. I was desperate to become a badminton player. I used to wake up at four in the morning and I used to go ahead for my coaching and for my practice. Uh, don't you think that is hard work? Now, I asked them, uh, did you love it? Did you like doing it? They said, yes, then it is not hard work. It is absolutely not hard work. That is called passion. Yeah. Hard work is something when your boss tells you that, boss, uh, you have to uh, complete this presentation and then leave. Though in your house, everybody is waiting because today is your birthday and everybody is waiting so that you go home and you cut the cake. Yeah. And everybody is waiting out there and you are here in the office. Where do you want to be? You want to be in the office or you want to be at home? Now, if you want to be at home, but you cannot be at home and you want to stay in the office and do that presentation or whatever work that you're doing, okay, making your presentation or doing your assignment or whatever, anything that you're doing, that is called as hard work. 
So if there are students who are present here, my dear students, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me say a lot of people think that there is smart work. Okay, there is no definition to smart work. Okay, according to me, okay, it is binary. Either you like doing or you don't like doing it. Ah, sometimes I like, yeah, of course, the success or whatever that you want to achieve in, in your life, your moods and weather conditions should not decide upon that. This is my take on uh, something called as hard work, yeah. Uh, well, by the way, what am I doing right now by talking about hard work? And also, I'm going to be talking about attitude. I'm just trying to set the background because I'm going to say something so that it fits into your system very easily. Okay. Now, this is about hard work. Now, let's talk about attitude. Okay. Uh, now, let me ask this question. Uh, I have a ice cream, which is uh, vanilla. And I have another flavor, which is chocolate. So which one would you like? Okay, this is a question. So obviously, you don't have to give me an answer. Keep that in mind. And I'm sure most of you, vanilla is not an option for you. Or for most of you, chocolate is not an option for you. Okay, so you already have your choice up here in the mind. So let me ask you this. How did you get this choice? How? How did this automatically happen how did it just occur to you how did the picture come into your mind how how what kind of a wiring what kind of a programming has happened into your mind so there must be something which has happened in the past right obviously something has happened in the past that's why you are able to connect to this where the brain does not even give you an option automatically the uh, result is all right in front of you instantly so how did this happen? I'm going to be uh, giving you a small little uh, uh, sneak peek into this kind of an experience. Okay, let me do this to you. All right. So uh, again, I've learned a lot of things from my uh, kids. So this is also uh, dedicated to my first daughter. Okay. Uh, I was in training, Sandeep sir. I was in training one day. And uh, I got into a session and uh, obviously during the session, none of us, we have our phones, uh, uh, you know, active. We put it on silent or we keep it in a place where we, obviously the calls come in, but we wouldn't get to know. So we only check during the break times. Now I got into the session. Obviously, when you get into the session, your mind, your heart, your soul, everything goes into the session because anything you do, do it absolutely 100%. If not, you don't do it. Yeah, that's that's the that's the kind of a, a, a you know a, a coaching or that's the kind of a coaching that I have got. That's the kind of lessons that I've got uh, when I wanted to become a trainer. Uh, today also, I go ahead and uh, try and give the same information to everybody. Anything that you do, ladies and gentlemen, the ones who are present out here, anything that you do, let me say this. When I say I'm categorically saying this, anything is anything. Yeah, I say this to the students uh, in the colleges. I say the same thing in the corporates also uh, to the students because in the context of students today, uh, students, if you are there in the class, most of us, there are certain times we, when we are sitting in the class, we think of bunking the class. Now, the problem, what, the, the, the biggest problem out there is when you're sitting in the class, you're thinking of bunking in the class, neither you're bunking the class nor you're being in the class. So what I would suggest is if you don't want to be in the class, just go. Okay, let's look at the consequences a little later. Yeah, just go. Okay, or if you... There is another way. When you have bunged your classes, you are there outside with your friends in your own whatever hangouts, does and wherever that you guys chill. When you're there, the moment that thought comes into your mind that what is happening in the class, neither you're enjoying your bunk nor you're there in the class. So what I would recommend, what I would suggest all of you is if you, whatever that you're doing, give your 100% to that. 100%. You're sitting here right now. Uh, you have logged in. You are online. You're listening to me. You are listening to nobody, but you're listening to me. Or don't listen to me. Just go ahead and continue doing whatever that you're doing. This is my tip, my dear friends. Okay. And believe me, this has worked wonders. People feel 
so safe when, i mean this is what people have been saying people feel so safe when they have a conversation with me people would love to have a conversation with me they would like to listen to me more why because they are giving 100% attention why are they giving 100% attention is ladies and gentlemen because i am giving 100% attention to them you know uh, most most of the people you know there's no rocket science to this these are the kind of things unfortunately uh, we've not learned these things when we were in school yeah and unfortunately we we have to learn it now and I, I, i'm sorry it's not unfortunate it's fortunate that we get to learn this at least now yeah now going back uh, in the training i was there in the training kept the mobile phone on to the side got into the training went on went on i asked the students to we take a quick bio break so the students said no we are all good i think you should go ahead and continue continue uh kept the phone at around 9:30 in the morning aside the next time that i get to see my phone is at around 12:45 now 12:45 i see ladies and gentlemen believe me i have this memory it's a picture memory that i have yeah 12:45 sandeep sir when i look at my mobile phone there are 37 missed calls and out of 37 i think yeah it, about 35 missed calls by my wife and two different numbers now obviously if it has come from your wife uh generally that does not happen now this is very unusual that you've got a call and that to so many times and there are two different numbers as well so automatically your mind starts working on the other side and it becomes a little negative you know all these things sandeep sir whatever that i'm mentioning all these things took place in a span of 2 to 3 seconds would you agree yes yeah in about 2 3 seconds the world changed you know my heart beat i skipped the beat there is an absolute adrenaline gush into the system you want to know why what happened and so on immediately i called the number when i called the number the i mean my wife is speaking to somebody i disconnect the call again i call her she's continued she i mean the phone is still busy again i call her because i want to know i mean is there any kind of an emergency why and so on and so forth and so on now ladies and gentlemen uh, please pay attention and listen to this probably with what i'm going to say i'm sure some of you or 100% of the people would be able to refer to what i'm trying to say yeah at one point i get connected to my wife and i say what happened just in the stone and she says relax nothing has happened it is not me who has called you it is your daughter who has called she needs to talk to you it seems right from the time that i picked her up she is they call me abu okay uh, like all of us we call dad papa so they call me abu so she has been right from the time that i picked her up from the school so she was going to the kindergarten yeah so she right from the time that she's picked her up and from then she has been talking about me okay uh mama it is about abu 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 this abu that abu this abu that and the, so she wants to talk to you so she is not allowing me to talk to you she wants to talk please talk to her so i take the phone and i ask her zen her name is zenab so i ask her zen yes zen you want to talk to me what happened so abu abu yeah go on zen what is it what what, what happened so abu abu i want to ask you something so i say go on so she says abu uh i want a chocolate abu i say come on you gave your dad and you know small little mini heart attack because of this chocolate what's wrong with you you should have told mama mama would have told the watchman you would have gone ahead and bro- uh, bought you a chocolate so she says no abu no 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 i want you to buy me this chocolate i said done deal when i'm coming back home when i get back home i will get you a chocolate she says no now you come home you take me to the shop and you buy me this chocolate okay i say okay all right done deal let's do this 
So Sandeep sir and all the other people who are out here with me right now, okay, uh, kindly acknowledge to what I'm going to be saying right now. Has this ever happened with you all when you wanted to get back home early? <laughs> that is the day that you would not be able to go home early. Has this ever happened with you? <laughs> I'm in line with you, sir, in that case. <laughs> no, this is, I, I don't know, this is the law of attraction. This is how it works. Whenever that you want to get home early, that is the day that you will have an inevitable circumstance, a situation where you cannot abandon it. You have to stay because your physical presence makes a difference there. And that particular day, you won't be able to go home. Yeah. So the same thing happened with me the, the other day as well, because mentally I had planned the other day. Uh, that okay chalo since the kid is asking let me take these ladies out today let me take them out for dinner and uh, we'll have dinner outside in their favorite Chinese restaurant and after that when we are getting back home uh, the, the girl wants let, let me buy her something and let's come back home this is what I thought and thankfully luckily I did not say this to them if I would have told this to my wife and my kid they would have they would have got disappointed yeah so I did not say it. Now, suddenly something comes up and uh, uh, there was a firefighting situation and I had to stay back with whatever that I was doing. And uh, I was supposed to leave by 6, 6.30 max. That day, I could leave home only by 9, 9.30. Ladies and gentlemen, Sandeep sir, around 9.30, 9.45, believe me, I'm saying this, I'm a normal human being. Okay, with all, all absolute, exact, simple emotions in me. Yeah, that particular day I had a throbbing headache. I had some uh, demon sitting inside my head and banging the hell out of my head. That kind of a throbbing headache that I have. I had completely forgotten about Zainab's chocolate, no dinner, nothing, severe throbbing headache that I had. So I decided that uh, quietly just get back home. Yeah, uh, I don't mind skipping my dinner, but I want to go ahead and crash. I want to go and sleep. Now, this is the scene. Ladies and gentlemen, view this. Okay, I want you to view this sneak peek. Okay, so I, I used to live in an apartment and my house, that is my flat used to be on a ground floor. And uh, I take my car the way in which that I had the reverse horn in my car, it had a very peculiar sound, uh, 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 a very nice jingle that it had. So everybody would get to know that it is me who has arrived because of the reverse horn. So the moment the reverse horn was on, my daughter, the first one, second one was a tiny little dot and she had already fallen asleep because it's already around 9.45, 10 at night. So she listens. And generally, these girls sleep by 8, max 8.30 they sleep. Today, it is around 9.45, 10. And the girl is still up. Okay. And uh, the reverse on. Immediately, the door is, you know, banged open. And this girl is in her night suit. Tiny little tot. Yeah, cute little baby. She comes with that, you know, stammering, uh, beautiful language like the normal babies have. She comes and she says, Abu, Abu, chocolate, Abu. She just says, believe me, that conversation which took place at around 12.45, 1 o'clock with Zainab, I immediately, you know, I'm teleported to that conversation and I say, oh, damn, I completely forgot. And uh, generally, I ask this question, Sandeep sir and everybody else. I ask this. If you were to be in my place, what would you do? You would say, no, 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 come on, no chocolate. Some of them very superficially, they say that, okay, come on, let's go ahead and buy the chocolate right now and so on. Understand, you know, understand. Practically, you have a throbbing headache. You had a drained out day in terms of uh, whatever your intellectual capacity that you have in terms of doing whatever work that you're doing. You're completely drained. You have no energy left because you've called it a day. It's, it's all over. So what would you do? Yeah. 
So a lot of people give me a lot of superficial answers, but let me say this. Uh, I, like I said, a normal human being in absolute normal emotions. I looked at my daughter with a frowny face. I just look at her and I say, Zaini, dad, Abu has got severe headache. But uh, I promise you this, not today. I will, before I drop you in the school, you know, I will take you to the shop. I'll buy you two chocolates instead of one. I'll buy you two. And you know what? We'll give a surprise to the little one. You know, Amina also. Amina is my second daughter. So I say we'll buy her also. We'll give her a small little surprise, but not today. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the chemistry that you should have with your partner. Okay. My wife, she looks at me. She gives me one look. And she says, she just says these two, three words. I think you should take her. That's it. That's it. Okay. She just says, I think you should take her. I No questions asked. No second thought. I just say, Zen, come here. I park the car, take the bike. The shop, I think, was less than 60 seconds away from my house. 60 seconds away from my house. So I take her there. Okay. This kid, she's not even wearing... Uh, her uh, footwear, no slippers, nothing at all. So I, you know, I make her sit in the forward. I take her to the shop. I lift my daughter. I go to the shop and I say, Zen, buy what you want to buy. I was not in that mode of, uh, you know, negotiating. You should buy this. You should buy that. No, you just buy. I want to get done with this requirement of this kid that she has. So I take her. The, the, the shopkeeper is trying to close the shop. I say, Cheta, Cheta is our... Uh, uh, Malayali, uh, you know, brothers who have their shops, you know, the supermarkets open. So he looks at her and he says that, Aha, dad ko leke aagya abhi, okay? Abhi kya chahiye tumko? And uh, she says, uh, Abu, Abu, with very hesitant uh, tone, you know, this kid. She looks at me and she says, Abu, Abu. I says, Zain, go ahead. Tell me what do you want? With that timid voice, with that, you know, uh, doubtful tone, she says, Abu, I want Mentos Abu. I say, like I said, I was not into that mode of negotiating that mint you should not eat. It's not good for the kids and all that. I say, Baba, Mentos chahiye, give her Mentos. And she says, Abu, I want two Mentos Abu. I say, Cheta, give me four Mentos. I had two rupees coin. I just gave her two, gave him two rupees and he gives, gives me four Mentos. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the point that you have to make a note. Listen to this very carefully. Four Mentos that the kid gets. The kid is absolutely flabbergasted with this kind of a thing. She takes those three Mentos and I say, you have to give one to Amina also. So she takes one, she puts it onto this pocket, one onto the side pocket, one to onto this pocket, one she's holding, she's uh, hugging me, she's kissing me here, she says, Abu, you're the best, and all that, with that stammering word, uh, language that she has. I come back home, and I say, go, go and sleep now. So she just goes inside, and I could listen that she's talking, you know, the, the kids talk, no? when, they, when they cannot sleep, they're talking, and she's making that noise with that rapper and all that, and uh, I asked my wife, what happened, how was the day, she said, my wife, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me very, very carefully now, this is the climax of the story, and this is where the attitude begins, right from the time, she says, after, right from the time that I picked her, that is around 12 o'clock that I picked her. Right from then, she has been talking only and only about you. She didn't tell me anything. She has been saying this. She has been saying that. I think these kids had some kind of a conversation. You know, no, uh, Sandeep, sir, you, when you and I, when we were young, when we were in school, whose father is more strong? My father can beat Superman also. Your father can beat Batman also. My father, if he punches, he will go ahead and land in moon. And, you know, that kind of a, some, some kind of a kiddish conversation which has taken place there. And the hype which is created about the dad, something that the kid has already... Uh, designed or mapped up into the mind. When the kids spoke to me, ladies and gentlemen, 
when the kid spoke to me that uh, you know i want you to buy me a chocolate now imagine all of you imagine that day if i would not have bought or taken this girl out to buy the chocolate the kid is around 4 4 and a half years of age at that age the kid would not understand what does headache mean and by the way the kid would not even know what does father mean what does mother mean huh? why because there is only a lady called mother who takes care of them and there is a guy called father who fulfills all their financial or whatever desires that they have in terms of uh, economics and commerce that that's that's the kind of an understanding that the kids have they don't understand the meaning of a father they don't understand the meaning of a mother at that age they they just look at their comfort because there is a zone which is created for the kids yeah they don't have that level of maturity yeah that day if i would not have taken this kid that day that evening in her mind which is like a clean slate ladies and gentlemen that day she could have written that my father is a liar why because she does not understand what does uh, uh you know ha- a headache mean she does not know what has happened with me in, in the, throughout the day how much of pressure whatever tensions that i've gone through she wouldn't understand that what she understands is my father told me that when he comes back home he will take me out to buy me a chocolate he will just take me out and he'll buy me a chocolate this is her understanding so ladies and gentlemen that day at the cost of 2 rupees buying her four mentos i proved to my kid that your father is not a liar just like that ladies and gentlemen there are quite a few experiences in our past which have designed the way in which that we think the way in which that we act the way in which that we take decisions okay so now ladies and gentlemen the way in which that you think is equal to attitude so lot of us don't understand this word called attitude so when we talk about the winning attitude now winning it is about achieving how do you achieve by being positive okay in there are certain things that you need to be very focused we will talk about that okay need be if there is time we will talk about it let me get into the depth of it okay uh, let me also talk about this uh, thing called maturity yeah uh, what does maturity mean a lot of people now of course there is a physical maturity where there is a biological process that uh all human beings go through uh, i'm not talking about the physical but i'm talking about the mental maturity mental maturity is basically about your reactions your reactions should not be controlled by others is equal to you being mature okay somebody's anger should not decide that you become angry of course I, 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 it doesn't uh, doesn't mean that you should never get anger by design we are uh, uh, we are designed in in a way where we will get anger we will get frustrated the point here is not about you not getting angry for how long are you going to be in that state of anger we are talking about that okay a matured person stays in that state of emotion for a very short duration because they know that this is the kind of a thing no 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 this is draining a lot of my i even i do this okay of course i've learned all the, this requires absolute practice this requires an beautiful environment this requires too much of a dedication in doing what you're doing sandeep sir It, it all these things just don't happen just like that if you are surrounded by all people who are uh, only talking about wrong bad and negative things about others believe me you also become that okay you got to be in a companionship where people do not talk about uh, anything bad behind a person if i have to talk anything bad behind a person i shouldn't be doing that behind the person i should have the capacity to talk and give that feedback in front of that person yeah 
uh, I should be able to. Most of us, Sandeep sir, another question. Uh, this has got to do with uh, a lot of us. We think that our communication skills is not good. A lot of us think. Or uh, on the other side also, a lot of people think my communication skills is very good. Now, they, the deterrent of this thing has got to do with language English. People think if I speak good language, good English, it means my communication is good. If my English is not good, then my communication is not good. No, I'm sorry. Most of you, if you're thinking in this lines, I am sorry, ladies and gentlemen, you have highly mistaken. Please re refrain from such thoughts. It is not, it is not correct. Okay. What is communication? Communication is making the other person understand what you want that person to understand. Has this ever happened with you people? Sandeep, sir. Okay. Uh, there are certain times. Uh, okay. Let me give my example. Once upon a time when I, uh, this was an example, I went ahead and I said something to my friend. And believe me, my 100% intention was to improve or inspire my friend. Okay. But my friend, I, when I meet him the next day, my friend has completely frowned his face because he's felt bad for whatever that I've said. And he says that, Aftab, I did not like what you said yesterday. I said, why? What, what did I say? He said, did, didn't you say this? I said, yes, I said this. So he says, I felt bad. I say, my dear friend, I did not say this to make you feel bad. In fact, I said this so that your life gets aligned and you get inspired. But he says, no, what you said is uh, I felt bad. I really felt very bad. Now, in this case, who's right in what I said? Am I right in whatever that I said? Or is he is my friend right in understanding whatever that he's understood? What is the fact in this? The fact in this is, ladies and gentlemen, remember this, okay? This is a key. This is a technique. This is a formula for all of you. Most of us uh, have this complaint that my parents don't understand me. My friends don't understand me. My colleagues don't understand me. Nobody understands me. Uh, why is it? Why, why does this thing happen only with me? Okay. Why does this thing happen only with you? Is because your communication is not in lines with what you are saying because there is something else which is running up here and something else which is coming out of here and there is something else which the people are understanding with what you say did you understand okay so if see it's an art communication is an art and if you know how to communicate karlo dunya mutthi mein this is how it is okay you 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 can I mean, you can do whatever that you want. You, you will be, I mean, you will be indispensable if your communication is all, all absolutely fine. 80% of the people in the world, believe me, I'm not exaggerating. Statistics is absolute, absolutely accurate. 80% of the people in the world, their communication skills are very, very inappropriate. And that is why these 80% of the people in the world are working towards 20% of the people in the world who have 80% of the wealth in the world. I know, I don't know if you've got it, uh, if this is got here or it just went above your head with all of you. 80, I mean, Paratos principle, ladies and gentlemen, 80, 20. Yeah. So 20% of the people in the world have got 80% of the wealth. Okay. And do you think 20% of the people, are they hardworking? No. Of course, they are hardworking in a different method, in a different mode, in a different way. Okay, But all these 80% of the people in the world, they are working towards making these 20% people richer every day, every hour, every minute and second of their life. Yeah, so you will have to identify, understand. We will talk about the techniques. How, how do you move from 80% to 20% and so on? Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, like I said about attitude, attitude is about the way in which that we have already programmed our mind. 
okay for example i spoke about vanilla i spoke about chocolate flavor so automatically chocolate came into a lot of people's mind a lot of uh, vanilla which came into a lot of people's mind and how because of the programming which has happened and how did this programming happen remember i gave you zainab's example my daughter's example that one night i had told her god knows what what went during the day for her whatever that she spoken with her friends that particular day she must have said my dad is like this my dad is like that so it was a plain white open canvas i had to color it thankfully that day i colored the right thing okay but in my case i had studies i don't like studies beat this <laughs> i don't like look at the profession that i'm in i don't like it the reason why i don't like it is uh you know may god be kind to that lady who was my tuition teacher once upon a time she she was brutal <laughs> she was brutal uh, learning means uh, the marks on my body determined how much i learned for the day yeah so once upon a time it was like that but today you cannot touch the kid you cannot hit the kid but those days my mother she used to tell the teacher please beat him he doesn't listen beat him beat him black and blue <laughs> so perhaps there is some kind of a you know coding the programming which has happened to me in terms of studies i watch a lot of videos i listen to a lot of ebooks okay this is my method of learning today yeah of course i do uh, a little bit of reading also today because i wanted to challenge myself get out of you know i wanted to reprogram my mind with whatever programming which has happened so ladies and gentlemen when we talk about attitude i thought this is what i feel that when we talk about personality development the first thing which should come into our mind is attitude and for attitude if you have to be positive now when we talk about positive and negative well uh, positive and negative is also very very subjective for example all uh, uh, sandeep sir uh, are you doing have you done your uh, uh you know um, covid test for your travel uh, lately sir tomorrow it is scheduled on sir actually correct very good so sir this uh, <laughs> like i said positive and negative yeah so positive and negative is very subjective yeah so this covid test you would be positive uh, mentally if the covid report comes negative or positive sir <laughs> has to be negative sir yes i wish i hope and i pray and i bless you that the report should be 100% negative may for all the people in the entire world let the report whenever that they do let it always be negative because negative covid report is always positive for all of us now don't you think hey, i mean it's an oxymoron thing yeah because all negative medical reports are all positive isn't it yeah so just like that ladies and gentlemen half door open for somebody is half door closed for somebody isn't it so how could you say that it is positive or negative so let me say this okay so ladies and gentlemen when we talk about uh, positive and negative so what is positive is anything that you want to achieve anything that you want to achieve i repeat once again anything that you want to achieve anything which enables you to achieve that thing is positive something that you want to achieve and something which enables you enables you to achieve that that is positive something that you want to achieve something which disables you to go ahead and accomplish that or achieve that that is negative all of you with me give me a thumbs up yeah uh, online sessions no so i've got used to asking the audience thumbs up and hands up and all that okay so uh, this should be one of the formulas for uh, the ones who are out here today understand this these are very very simple things it's not no rocket science about this but the problem is we've got we think all the success lies in 100% complication no no 
uh, I'm from the airline uh, background. They say any equipment which is there in the airplane, any equipment, right, from the extinguisher to the oxygen mask to a fire detector, any equipment which is there in the airplane, if it is not simple to operate, then it is not safe to be in the aircraft. So just like that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, any technique that you have, that technique has to be so simple that if you don't have clarity about adapting it, then you're not in the right direction. That's what it means. Yeah. So uh, I think we should, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know by talking, I, I could not realize the time at all, sir. It is about uh, half a century minutes that we have crossed by 50 minutes of my conversation. I, I just hope that people have, uh, <laughs> they've understood whatever that I've said. Uh, hope they've not uh, uh, gone into a different zone altogether. So I think I will keep it uh, short now and I will hold on to myself and I'll let me take a few questions if there are any questions. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. We do have uh, certain questions. Uh, so oh. probably we'll take quickly. So uh, I'm sure uh, most of the questions are with related to... Uh, I'll just read out the questions, sir. The sure, sir. Asked by Mr. Amit Singh, who says, uh, Sir, how can personality development be used in career plan? Sir, uh, personality development, uh, how this can be used in career planning, life planning, uh, designing of uh, uh, one's uh, life or designing of somebody's life. Everything has got to do with personality development only. Because if you want to move, when you talk about career planning, it means career planning is I am at a point X. I want to move to point Y. So with whatever skills that I have, whatever personality, whatever mental ability that I have, I am in X already. If I have to move to Y, then there has to be a shift in the way in which that I think and operate. Until and unless I don't do that, how do I move? How do I uh, uh, transcend to the next level? Career uh, personality has to be developed on a... Uh, uh, if not too much, on a daily basis, sir, you'll have to check. Uh, it, it is a very good question, whoever has asked, very good question. Uh, sir, you'll have to just keep a tap on uh, if you are going in the right direction. How do you do this? What is that one small thing that I learned today? That is enough, sir. That one, one inquiry that you have on a daily basis, ki mera din aaj ka kaise guzra? Did I, was my day productive? See, it could be as small as 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 6. This, this can be actually manifested in a different way. It could be any simplest thing, okay? But there has to be an awareness, an inquiry on a daily basis. So that is the answer to the question that Mr. Yes, Amit had asked. I hope Mr. Amit have received it. And then almost the similar question has been asked by Neha. I think oh. that also has been answered. That is the role of the personality development in career growth. Right. So these are things I'm sure you have addressed it very well, sir. Mm -hmm. So next question is by Rakesh Bhai Junewala. I think somebody from Gujarat. Thank you, sir, for a great session. Uh, how do you deal with negative attitudes? Uh, first of all, uh, Sandeep sir and Rakesh Bhai. Uh, that's a lovely name that you have, Rakesh Bhai, because bhai, naam mein bhai hai. Yeah, very nice. Rakesh Bhai, uh, when we go to the doctor, no, uh, the moment doctor identifies that this is the problem, 50% of the solution we've already identified. Why? Because you've identified what is the problem. Correct, no? So in your case, if you know that you are dealing with negative, if you are dealing with negative attitude, 50% of the problem is actually solved. Why? Because you know the problem is there. Now you just have to be conscious about am I negative? Now what is negative? You know, I gave you a very, very clear distinction on what is negative, what is positive. Negative is something which disables you in achieving 
attaining, accomplishing whatever that you want to achieve. That is called negative. Okay, that could be an action, that could be a habit, that could be a thought, that could be a person, that could be any anything. Okay, so refrain from those things and alter your thinking process. You just have to tell yourself, no, 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 no. Let me not think like this. Let me not think like this. Okay, let me not think like this. It's a conscious effort. And for this, you need to see most of the people in the world. Okay, you take any greatest person who whoever has accomplished whatever that they have accomplished all of them had a mentor or rather have a mentor and that is why we say we should have mentors and that is one thing that gibs that i'm very proud of uh, with my association with them that they have this they've understood this and that is why you need to have a mentor you need to have a guru Okay, mentor is the English word, but actually it's the guru that we need to have. So that's what it is, Rakesh Bhai. Hope uh, you've understood. And uh, this is uh, what I can say. I can go on about it. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, constraints of time. So this is what it is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think, uh, as you rightly said, the first step itself is to identify the first step. So the moment they understand that, I think the answer is right there. Absolutely. Moving to the next question, sir. Uh, Mr. Santosh Mittal asked, how to create a winning attitude when we face any problem that time, negative attitude automatically come to me. Please advise. So this, this is also the same uh, thing, sir. Uh, I, I will, instead of uh, talking about this, I'll give you a solution to this. Now, what you need to do is you have to quickly uh, ascertain your environment. What are the kind of people that you are spending time with? Okay. So when you talk about winning, am I winning by pulling Sandeep sir down or uh, is there, can there only be one winner? Can Sandeep and Aftab become winners? Is that uh, possible? If that is possible, sir, I'm telling you, you, uh, you're going to go very far. But in a situation where either Sandeep can win or Aftab can win, that is where the problem is. And for that kind of a situation, what you should be doing is that you need to create an environment. An environment where people are talking about, even if you lose, doesn't matter. No problem. It's okay. No problem. It's okay. So automatically, your thought process, your orientation, your programming automatically stops bothering you. Okay. So this is what you need to be doing, Santosh, sir. Very, very nicely said, sir. Uh, I mean, my learning here for this particular question is instead of competing with each other, it's always better to complete each other, which helps to win, win situation for both. Yes, sir. So, uh, moving to the next question, this has been asked by Avad Kabir. I want to ask about how to stop or listen, lessen the process of overthinking, like getting nervous about small things. Okay. Uh, this is a fantastic thing. If uh... Uh, Awad Shabir, uh, first of all, I have to say you have a very nice name, Awad. Uh, if you are overthinking, I like people who are overthinking. It is a fantastic attribute. But this overthinking has to, uh, uh, you know, uh, transform into an action. The problem with people who overthink is they never take an action. So if you take an action, believe me, you become a doer. You don't become, of course, you are a thinker, but you also move into that zone of uh, doing things. So here I know where this question is coming from. This question is coming from a zone where you are only thinking no action is being taken. Take an action. Automatically, this question will eradicate. Yeah. I hope, Awad, you have received the answers. So kindly try doing it. Start taking the actions, implementing it. I'm sure things will not have, uh, I mean, things will be in a better, better situation. Right. And winning, this has been asked by Mr. Ramesh. Uh, I mean, sir, when we speak about attitude, a lot of uh, men are into uh, asking so many questions, I would say. So, can winning attitude is learnable skill? I have tried many times to be a positive, but positive attitude don't stay with me for a long time. Yeah, that is because there is no environment, no, sir. There's no environment. Let me say this in this occasion. I'll, I'll have to say this. Um, there are smokers. 
okay there, there's a recent times that i did a little bit of a work with uh, some person so he said that i'm a smoker i want to get rid of smoking so i asked him uh, are you sure that you want to get rid of smoking so he says yes for sure i want to get rid of smoking there's no doubt about that at what cost the moment i when i asked him what cost he said is there a cost involved in this then i said uh, then the programming has not happened yet the programming has not happened yet there has to be a programming which has to take place here sir it, the, the person has to 100% determine that no i want to quit smoking okay until then it is not possible now uh, the things which are enablers are first thing you have to stop going to those places where you smoke number one two you have to stop meeting too very often those friends who you enjoy time smoking so that is the answer to this question sir that uh, i have tried many time to be positive but positive attitude don't stay with me for long time because you do not have people like that who are encouraging you to be okay you need to move around with uh, people like that the are i am a coach i do a lot of corporate trainings i hold, handhold a lot of managers i do this on a daily basis i am a human being there are certain times when i speak my wife comes and tells me why are you being so negative and the moment when she says that i i take a check i say oh damn yes she is right i am negative in this though i am surrounded by an environment i need an environment which tells which supports the system saying that boss you're being negative no 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 come out of this come out of this so you need to create an environment like that it is very important okay a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, very staunch uh, uh you know super duper uh, performer also certain times can uh, in the process of hitting a sixer since it is a t20 world cup season that's why i'm using this example yeah uh, hitting a sixer in the process they also get out yeah so it, it's okay it's okay but create an environment like that so ramesh mr ramesh this is the answer sir so you have to uh, i know uh, positive uh, you've tried many times to be positive but positive attitude don't stay with you for a long time why because you not there is the programming which is not there and the people around you are not the ones who are trying to pull you on top that's the reason why yes mr ramesh thank you so much sir uh moving to the next question if a to z is number to 1 to 26 as it is with 100% yes jay kumar surya narayana you are absolutely right hard work is also i think it is uh, 98 i think it is only attitude which is uh, which gets 100 out of 100 yeah so moving to the next question which is with puja asks here english is very essential these days in all the aspects of life especially in corporate so how do it should not be basis of assessing one speaking skills how it should not be the basis of assessing one's speaking skills uh well if i am going for a bodybuilding competition i have to focus on my uh, 360 degree overall personality puja okay right from my head to my toe every muscle has to be uh, you know uh, which has to be very very evident okay but the same thing that is for uh, if i'm going for a bodybuilding competition but if i'm going for a modeling you know i'm going to endorse a, a let's say a west west um, uh, ad a, a company okay now i need i you know my lower body not necessary it has to be i can wear a trousers which can be absolutely a boot cut kind it can be anything but my focus has to be on my chest so the reason why i told you this right now is when you know that english is a very very essential requirement in the corporate world today everybody is assessing everybody's uh, intellect or attitude or their potential by the language english i think there are no two ways about it you just have to go ahead and improve your language yeah 
so uh, if somebody is judging you based on your language that you are a person like that no i would not uh, say that 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 it is appropriate okay uh, but if you are a person where you are going to get a job based on your english 100% pooja you have to go ahead improve on your speaking skills because people are going to assess you on your english so yeah. the same i mean there's one more similar question which has been asked by manoj who says how to improve both communication and english uh, uh both communication and english english is a uh, uh, okay communication separate we'll talk about communication english whatever it takes you have to listen to a lot of audios you have to uh, practice there are a lot of software is also these days which are freely available on the internet you click on the you uh, you subscribe for those softwares and they will teach you you know the uh, your uh, the pace in which that you read your pronunciation all that which is there so that is one one way of improving your english read a lot of newspapers reading forget about newspaper all filth in the newspaper but read whatever content whatever uh, in any genre that you want to improve read in those genres okay best thing to do is start speaking with everybody in english okay and allow the other person to correct you if in case if you are making an error okay so that you uh, you learn language english now coming to communication now communication is a different game my friend communication involves emotions okay communication involves understanding communication involves listening okay so this communication is a different game we are talking about uh, swim, swimming and uh, chess okay these are two different games yeah so chess requires a different skill swimming requires a different skill okay but of course both are sports only okay so communication is a different game english is a different game but i mean there are various ways where you can go ahead and improve in both uh so th- i mean i'm tempted to talk more about communication but i think i will hold it yeah sir uh, that is the reason what when we speak about gi just finishing school uh, this is what we our major focus is on where they need to improvise on the english at the same time they also need to work on the communication skills absolutely a very very key factor in our uh, gi just finishing school when it comes to the students real time experiencing so uh, moving ahead sir there is one question by anil ban sarkar who says sir how can anyone triumph over the negative thoughts uh how can anyone triumph over negative thoughts sir that's what i'm saying that uh, if you negative and positive i've i've clearly defined the negative and positive uh 50% of the problem is solved the moment you realize that it is negative when you know that you're being negative 50% of the problem is solved so what you need to do is just take an action which is uh, which should be contradicting to the thought that you're getting because you're getting a negative thought right okay now let's say uh, i am getting anger on somebody okay i know that i should not get anger but i am not able to because my emotions have taken over my intelligence that is what it is yeah uh, that is what anger is right so now at that moment what you need to challenge yourself is you need to do contradicting to what your thought is your th- thought is blast blast them down go ahead and give him a little piece of mind but you're not supposed to do it okay so that's that's how you have to deal with your negative uh, thought process now ladies and gentlemen the ones who think that you're negative i'm saying this once again 50% of your problem is solved why because you are aware that you are negative only thing right now what you need to do is create an environment who challenge you and they say that boss you're negative after up stop doing this after you're not supposed to do this be in an environment like that okay automatically you will be handheld that's the answer to your question Yeah. Thank you, sir. I hope Anirban will follow that and will stop. Will start doing things which is required. Right. Thank you, sir. So the next question has been asked by Nitima. He says, "At times we get demotivated. How can we? How can we will be motivated?" Uh, sir, this is uh, uh, this question is based on how sure 
how clear and how effective is your goal okay so goal the moment i have decided so let's say that uh, ladies and gentlemen i have decided that uh, come what may no pandemic no a recession no trainings nothing is going to stop me to uh, by going to dubai this december i want to go to dubai i want to see the world expo 2020 i want to meet my friends i have a lot of friends there i have uh, i could say that i have another social life there in dubai most of my friends live there in dubai i want to go there come what may and believe me uh, in between there are a lot of setbacks that which come in i would have decided that i need to earn money from here i need to earn money from there it doesn't happen that way so it doesn't mean that i'm going to stop uh, you know pursuing that uh, desire of traveling to dubai so that is what which is uh, which uh, uh, which is not clear for a lot of people so I, if you have set your goal so very clear right in front of you that if you are able to see that this is what i need to do and this is where i need to go I mean, it will automatically happen. Yeah. Great. Sir, uh, uh, we are running short, but we'll again take up another couple of questions, and then uh, probably we'll wind up because I'm sure there are few more questions. I think three more are there. So right. We'll do that. So there's one question by ask. I mean, uh, Rakesh R Y says, "Great session, Akab sir. Thank you, Sandeep sir, for hosting this session. What do you suggest about socializing with students in the class?" is it wrong to socialize too much with everyone either in the class or in corporate so rakesh uh, what is the intention behind this question <laughs> so that is the answer to the question rakesh so now if uh, what what do you suggest about socializing what would i suggest about socializing my friend because you are your net worth is your net worth rakesh yeah uh, who is the most powerful guy on planet earth is it uh, the president of the united states or is it mr facebook who is it yeah so that is the answer to your question my dear friend so uh, uh, i'm just reading between lines and i'm just trying to find the gray area here is it wrong to socialize too much with everyone is coming from a different kind of a background and that background is the intention what is the intention okay so uh, sandeep sir my friends uh, i have certain friends they say that uh, you cannot make friends after 25 or 30 years of age they say this you can you cannot make those uh, uh, chaddi buddies like how we the kind of friends that we made in school school to forget it the the camaraderie is very different the emotions and the i mean the chemistry is different there even in college the i mean there are a lot of uh, crimes that we have done together in colleges which is also different but once you enter into the uh, you know career life and all that they say that you cannot make friends and i am saying the sandeep sir i do i do not agree with that it has got to do with the intention okay if i like somebody see the what happens there is uh, at the age of 25 30 we make friends why because i i'm going to benefit something by making friends like this that intention that that is the intention are baba you are making friends make friends it be just you just being friends that's about it nothing no, no vested interest at all the amount of respect the kind of relationship that you make is going to be very strong the bond is going to be very strong if there is an intention that is where you need to think uh, uh, are we crossing the line are we doing it a little too much what is it and so on because you have the fear of losing that's yeah. why yeah great hope rakesh i have answered this question to you uh, i know it's a question uh, the answer to your question is a question by me so answer that question that i have asked you will find the answer thank you sir yeah. absolutely sir so diksha asks how do we deal with procrastination sir uh, you will have to buy a big long strong stick and keep whacking you where it hurts very badly yeah that's the <laughs> that is uh, that is the answer to the question this is on the lighter side on the serious side uh, my dear you do not have a goal now let's say uh, uh, diksha 
you know, at the end of 2022, uh, October 20th, you are going to get five crore rupees. Uh, for that, for you to get those five crore rupees today, you need to do this. Would you do it or wouldn't you do this? Will you say, no, not today, I'll do it tomorrow? No, you will run. You will run, you will go ahead, you will do, you will, you will do whatever it takes for you to do. Okay. Why? Because it is very clear for you because you know that you're going to get it just because you are not seeing it. That's why this procrastination seeps in. Okay. So set the goal, set the goal right for yourself. Yeah. Great, sir. Last question we'll take you for the day. Uh, I'm sure everybody's dying short time. So in the last question is in the press today, day working environment, lot of press is involved. How can we stop bothering? Uh, how can we can stop bothering work? others? <laughs> Uh, how can we stop bothering? What does that mean? Stop bothering whom? Because uh, get used to that, my dear friend. Okay, that's the way it is. That's the way it is. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of you. You you have to handle tremendous amount of pressure. Uh, your boss is going to come up and say that this is the way it is. This is the way it is. My my way or national highway. So you you like it? You take it. You don't like it? Still you take it until you're going to be under me. So get used to that. That's the way it is. So come in terms with that. When I say come in terms with that is don't try and resist it. The more you resist, the more it persists. Okay. Don't resist it. Accept it. That's the way it is. Okay. Uh, itna karna padega, itna karna padega. There are no two ways about it. Just go ahead and take it. Take it in the stride because you're going to learn. And I must say this, Sandeep, sir, before I, I leave, uh, since that last question came in, let me say this. All of you, remember this, my dear friends, whoever is aspiring to get into a job or the ones who are already working, my experience, I know too short of an age, but learned a lot of things because I've been very observant. Uh, if you have a bad boss, bad boss, where you cannot negotiate with that guy, where you irresistible, you know, uh, unreasonable. If you have a boss like that, congratulations. Congratulate yourself because you are going to taste success one is to four times earlier compared to the other person who has a very good boss because the learning is tremendous when you have a boss who is 100% unreasonable. Just hope and pray for yourself that you have a boss who is like that. Okay, so that you take, you you always say the best for the last, right? Even when you are having a meal, the things which you don't like to eat are the ones that you finish first. So just hope that you have a bad boss in the beginning of your career and your career, you become a rock solid champion in the beginning and in the making. Later, the ones who have a good boss, no problem. Okay, they will also cross the way. By, by the time they cross the bridge, you would have crossed four or five bridges like that already in the past. Okay, so with that note, ladies and gentlemen, it was fantastic being with you. Over to you, Sandeep, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Saab, sir. I mean, it was indeed a grateful and enlightening uh, session which we had with you about the personality development and the winning attitude. So thank you so much for all your valuable tips and information. But uh, on behalf of the IGS team, uh, I extend my sincere thanks to you. And I thank my I thank my entire team of GIS for the extensive support and the efforts to be the best. Thank you, Team GIS. A big thank you to the extended family that is our dear participants who have been really obliged from the overwhelming responses which we have been receiving. And uh, GIS is known for its uh, knowledge sharing and its hospitality. So experience it, experience it by visiting up your mind. I bet that you will love the state of our corporate infrastructure. And also, you would love the team and innovative minds that GIGS believes in spreading the power of positivity. Looking forward for your visit. You can watch all the previous webinars in YouTube. And just to mind all my dear friends who are waiting for the e-certificate information. So this is for all you guys. So the e-certificate will be sent to your registered email by 22nd, that is day after tomorrow. And uh, not to miss the upcoming webinars. Our next webinar will be on 8th of this month, uh, the next month at 8th of November, and it is on 21st century skills in the world of learning and development. 
and our resource person is Ms. Smita Srikant, who is a consulting LND, coach, trainer, assessor, founder at Fluency AI Learning. And even on 18th of November, we have the next webinar that is on the importance of mindset and skill set in achieving the success by uh, Mr. Deepak Dustin, who is a TEDx speaker, motivational speaker, trainer, and professional speaker. So don't miss to register. Kindly follow GIGS on all the social media platforms, LinkedIn, Twitter, Telegram, Instagram, Facebook, and be with us like this as always. And you've been a wonderful audience. And I would, I should thank uh, Aftab sir for such a wonderful session what we have once again, sir. Thank you, thank you so much for being with us. And it's a privilege and honor for us to, you being with us in the GIBS Finishing School as well, sir. Thank Pleasure you. Thank is you. all mine. Thank you very much, Sandeep, sir. Thank you very much, uh, everybody. Looking forward to meet you all soon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.